Thank you. Uh, yes, we had a lot of really good presentations so far with these uh, two sessions. It's been really great. Um, I got a just quick note with uh, my dealing with, with Michael Sprinkle uh, as I got involved with the uh, latex modified concrete overlay work. Uh, you know, getting into the 548 section, uh, just kind of you know, earning my my or, you know. Starting my education on the on the work that we were doing, and having some different scenarios that would come up with DOTs, uh, I saw Mike's name everywhere, and kind of became someone to to reach out to to discuss and talk through different scenarios that would come up to help guide a, a DOT in, in the right direction. If it was uh, an item that was questionable or they were very stringent one way or the other, um, so had those kind of conversations over the phone with him for a number of years. My first ACI convention, uh, I met Michael, uh, got involved with 548 then, uh, which that ended up, uh, I guess that was the last uh, convention he actually was able to attend. Um, so I was fortunate enough to at least get him, get to meet him in person, uh, at least one time, uh, after, uh, you know, talking with him many, many times over the years. Um, so today we're going to kind of just do a little bit of uh, get into some latex modified concrete. So uh, Chuck will uh, will go kind of go through the backstory of uh, low temperature cure concrete research uh, for LMC. Um, you know what some of the uh, LMC temperature restrictions are and some contractor challenges. I'll you know kind of talk about those topics and then uh, go back to Chuck and we'll kind of get into our low temperature cure project that we performed. Um, we kind of teamed up on a project that, that we had going on. Um, it was in like, I think it's spring of 21. Uh, did that in combination with Trendsill and a local, local testing company they were using on the project. Um, you know, so that's gonna kind of give us a good insight on, uh, you know, being able to place and cure LMC concrete in low temperatures, because as you'll see, there's uh, uh, many restrictions that, uh, that are imposed. Thanks, Kurt. And uh, thank you all for being here. It's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to make the presentation in this session. I, I may be the only presenter that's never met Michael Sprinkle in person. However, I've been on dozens of phone calls and dozens of Teams meetings with him. He, he's a charter member along with Chris, of the Latex Modified Concrete Working Group that's been established probably four or five years ago. And one thing about Michael, he, he knew his stuff. He had, he had the knowledge and the history. And whenever the group was looking for information, we'd always say, well, what does Michael say about it? And he, had a, he, he would usually have a published report, technical report, to talk about the question that we have. So it's really an honor to be here make this presentation today. So you may be wondering who Trinzio is. Uh, Trinzio was a carve-out of Dow Chemical about 14 years ago. And part of that carve-out was the latex and plastics industry of Dow. And so I'm part of this latex group. And this mod modifier ANA, it's known as Mod A in the industry, that's the primary latex that's used for latex modified concrete. When people in the industry say latex overlays, they mean the concrete. When I say latex, I mean the polymer, but I'm going to use it as the concrete today. Um, this Mod A latex is made in Midland, Michigan. It's in the same location that it was 50 years ago when it, the technology was developed. Uh, somebody mentioned Al Marola, uh, Lou Kuhlman, uh, Jerry Walters. Those were the kind of the founding fathers of this technology. <coughs> Not just the latex, but the mixed designs, the mortar designs. Even, I think, the mobile mixers, they had a hand in designing some of that. So it goes back 50 years to the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, we still provide the same kind of support that we have, uh, the, or that they had over the years. Uh, and then we recently, or I say recently, about 10 years ago, we recertified the Mod A Latex by doing third-party testing of this uh, standard, this FHWA RD 7835 standard. If you look at that standard, there's specifications for the latex, for the mixed design, and for the performance of that material. And so uh, we, it passes all that. That report is available if anybody's interested. 
So for latex overlays, <clears throat> uh, typically, depending on the kind of cement, not the, not the very early cement or the rapid set, but depending on the cement, typically it's wet cured for 48 hours, and then those um, burlap wet blankets are pulled off, and it's air dried for maybe two to three days after that. Of course, the wet cure is to develop the strength, and then the uh, drying is to allow that latex to coalesce in that matrix. We'll talk more about that later. And most DOTs have a temperature specification for installing latex overlays of 50 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we did some work. At that time, we called it 50 or low temperature cure work, but it wasn't that low. We, we looked at the 50 degree Fahrenheit range. And so we did look, we looked at several systems. All of these systems are wet cured for two days at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we modified the subsequent cure profiles, different temperatures profiles. Some of these we even added a couple of days of freezing temperature. Uh, we tried to replicate a fall profile where the temperature was decreasing over time, a spring profile where it was increasing over time. But what you see here is that uh, <clears throat> even after five days, all of these systems are above 44, they're, they're around 4,900 PSI compression strength. And then as time, uh, as time goes on, 28 day, 90 day, they're all, uh, excellent compression strength. 6,500 after 28 days, about 7,500 after 90 days. So excellent performance. Then we also took a look at the chloride ion penetration resistance using the AASHTO T277 test. And what you see here is that at 28 days, uh, all these systems are in this moderate range between two and 4,000 coulombs. At 90 days, they're all in the low range, and at six months, they're all in the very low range. And that's what we expect latex overlays to do. That latex, over time, will develop better chloride ion penetration resistance. I'll talk about that again in a later slide. Uh, but this is typical results. And, and so what we determined, this is just a slide that shows that in graphical form, uh, but what we determined was that 50 degrees Fahrenheit works really well. No matter uh, if, if you cure it at 50, it doesn't really matter what the temperature profile is after that. It performs extremely well, both for compressive strength and for chloride ion penetration resistance. We'll back on. Yeah, so as Chuck mentioned all that information, so like I've had many conversations with him over the years. Um, you know, the way work goes these days, you're wanting to start at a certain time and complete the project at a certain time, or you have to suspend your activities for the winter based on these temperatures. Um, you know, so we actually kind of ran into some projects uh, consecutively where it was like a dam and it's part of like a, a large recreational area. So like the requirements like work can't start until, you know, after Labor Day weekend and, you know, you need to be done performing that work you know, before December 1st, for example. Uh, so the window is like really constrained, um, you know, for when the work can be completed and add into that, uh, uh, stage construction. So these are all different things that, uh, you know, started leading to Further discussions on, hey, let's, let's look in a little bit deeper with these temperatures. Um, so as we've talked about most DOTs, so I've got three different DOTs up here with their LMC spec, uh, MoDOT, Arkansas, and Kentucky DOTs. Um, so you can see they've got some varying, uh, minimum temperatures, um, you know, from state to state. So there's not a whole lot of consistency there. Um, so one conversation you have with a DOT and may not be able to have the same conversation with another DOT because of their restrictions. Um, they've also got varying minimum batch material temperatures. Uh, so that's another challenge as a contractor that you're having to deal with. Uh, well, whether you're having to, uh, temper your materials in order to get a batch, batch temperature that's uh, sufficient for the specification. Um, and they all typically have like a, a cure temperature of uh, remaining above 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you know, so some of the challenges, as I've mentioned, um, you know, projects have constraints and when you can do work on these bridges, 
Um, you know, so there's more than just doing a overlay. You've got, you know, because of the bearing replacements, removing and replacing expansion joints, uh, uh, barrier wall work that needs to be done, or reconstructing an overhang. Uh, so there's a lot of different scopes of work that can tie into extending the, the time it takes to do the actual overlay work, tied in with stage construction and restrictions and when you can do the actual work. Um, you know, and, and you kind of, you know, you've got all these specifications that uh, ultimately, regardless of if we're following a specification or not, if something happens, you know, the contractor still carries all the risk. So, um, you know, that's pretty, pretty common, right? So we can do everything by the book, but if something did not go perfect or something happened, you know, we're, we're still being, being the ones that are looked at, uh, you know, so we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that all the follow, you know, proper procedures are being followed. Um, so, again, leading into, you know, kind of these uh, lower temperature testing, everything previous to, to what we've done prior to, to, to this little uh, sample uh, was related to 50 degrees. Um, you know, so again, the, the challenge was let's, let's see what happens when we get even lower and see if there's any kind of impact that uh, is made to, to the material so that as a contractor, you can, you know, go and have the conversation, you know, you've got this kind of constraint on the project, you're, you're going to be forcing us essentially to do the work outside of the parameters of your specification. So here's a plan, here's an action plan that, uh, that we can implement uh, to still, you know, get the product that you're looking for uh, while not, uh, you know, uh, making a detriment of, of, you know, what the end product is. Um, so some, some means and methods, um, you know, we've got, this would be like a, a lay down area for a mobile batch plant, uh, you know, this is set up for like a larger project, uh, you know, so you've got your, your aggregate bins that are kind of built there, so this is in the summertime, you know, making a, uh, a shed essentially for the material, um, that was actually set up with some sprinkler systems inside for what in the aggregate. Uh, you know, setting up your cement and your latex are right there in the middle. Um, you know, part of uh, our responsibility too is maintaining the, the temperature of the latex material itself uh, while it's in storage after it's been delivered to the job and prior to placing it. Um, so I've got some photos here we'll look at. Um, you know, also maintaining the concrete temperature during the cure period. So, you know, whether that's simple concrete blankets or a combination of concrete blankets and, and thermal heating uh, that has to be done. Uh, there, there is a way to, to do that. Um, so all this, again, like I said, can be mitigated by having a really good complete work plan uh, that you, you know, work through and talk with your, with your owner with, or if you're a subcontractor with your prime contractor. Um, so these are all things that, that have impacts. Um, so here are some examples of, uh, you know, Getting into colder weather, um, you know, the picture in the top left, that's we're actually casting a the slab there. Um, the, two, the, the lumber that you see in there going running through that, that formwork isn't actually for separate slab sections. That's for the block outs. It's actually inlay pipe uh, to allow you to, to run a boiler to steam the material. So the picture down below that, you've got a, a boiler and you can kind of see the steam coming through the, the rock pile there, so that's the pipes that are cast into the concrete, uh, allowing that to come through and, and heat your aggregate. Um, maintaining your latex, so the two pictures on the right hand side, uh, there's two different uh, kind of storage containers. you got an ISO uh, container on the right, the container on the left is a refrigerated uh, over the road trailer, um, and the picture up above that is a picture inside, so we've got uh, separate tanks built into there where we're able to uh, circulate the latex and, and keep that temperature of the latex uh, whatever we want to be at. If we want it to be at 50 degrees because it's you know really hot and you want to try and get your temperature down in your material, you know you can keep it at you know 50, 55 degrees. Or if it's you know colder temperatures, you want that up to like 75 degrees. So you're constantly circulating your material and keeping that at a constant temperature uh, throughout as you're as you're using all of the uh, all your material. Um, so toss it back over. 
Thank you. So, yeah, so we, after, after we did the earlier work, we said, okay, 50 degrees is great, performs well, but what about at the lower temperatures and how do we, how do we take a look at that? So I'm going to go through the project design, just how we handle the sample prep and the test methods and the results, obviously, in a brief summary. We selected five cure temperatures. 50 and 72 degrees, those are really control temperatures. We are, it's really repeating the 50 degree work that we did earlier. And then three low temperatures, 35, 40, and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we selected three tests that we wanted to, to run on these samples. Of course, compressive strength, that's pretty basic. If you don't have compressive strength, you don't have much of a system. Uh, bond strength by slant shear, ASTMC 882. And then again, the Astro T277 for chloride ion penetration resistance. Uh, specimens that we decided to do, we, we had, um, for, for compressive testing, we wanted to do early compressive breaks. Uh, so we did two, two and five day breaks and all the other tests, including compression strength was uh, 28, 90 and 180. And you can see the number of specimens that were required for that, 33 for each temperature. That means 165 total specimens were needed to be prepared. And then there was an additional 45 concrete bases that were needed made out of high strength Portland cement in order to do the slant shear test. And you'll see a little bit more about that. Uh, the LMC, as uh, Kurt mentioned, was produced by Concrete Strategies. Uh, and, and it was LMC that was actually produced for an installation. The, the, the specimens were pulled from material that was being installed for an overlay. So that, that, that adds an awful lot of credibility to the work, or for, to the material, but it also adds a lot of consistency. When you're making that many molds or that many cylinders in a, in a lab environment, trying to re reproduce that becomes quite, somewhat difficult. So that was a really key part of the project. And then GTS, Geothermal, Geothermal Technologies and uh, Systems out of uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. They were the ones that did the sample prep, uh, the handling of the storage of the specimens, and then the testing. This was the mix design that was used. This is a typical LMC mix design, seven sacks of cement, uh, three and a half gallons of latex per sack, or 24 and a half gallons per cubic yard. And uh, the rest of that is pretty, pretty straightforward. You can see the air content, water to cement ratio was 0.39. Slump was a little bit higher than targeted, but that's not unusual. And then the concrete temperatures, 65, 70 degree days, or 70 degrees on each of the two batch days. And then the ambient temperatures were right at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So these were done in April. And then there was some pre-batching pre needed. I mentioned that earlier that these uh, bases the slant shear bases that were needed for the slant shear test needed to be prepared ahead of time. High strength Portland cement, three by six inch cylinders, uh, and then these were that that mortar was cast against the uh, 30 degree angle dummy mold, so that uh, you can see the the uh, slant shear bases there on that in that photograph. Uh, two batch days, very similar. The first batch day, 35, 40, and 45 degree specimens were prepared. And you know that we said 33 samples per, per temperature. So that's 99 samples on the first batch day and 66 samples on batch day two. Uh, but you can see it was, uh, early in, uh, or excuse me, late in April, about a week apart. But the conditions were all very similar for both batch days. And this is just a photograph of the GPS folks prepping the 99 samples I think, on the first batch day. That's a lot of specimens. Okay, I'll, I'll flip through these quickly. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the details, but ASTMC 39, that was used to prep the samples. And here's the results. A couple of things I want you to see here. Uh, Two-day compressive strength. You can see that the higher temperature specimens are cured at higher temperature actually developed a little bit better strength, but they're still under 2,000 PSI. At five days, all the specimen, all the pure temperature results are about the same. And then as you go forward, they're all increasing, but the low temperature systems are increasing more. So that low and slow cure process 
you ultimately achieve a higher compressive strength. Uh, and then, of course, we took care of the, uh, the slant shear test. These are just some details about how they were formed. There's a photograph of them. They were sulfur caps, so you get a good test. And then there, these are the results at the lower temperature. Again, this is a mechanical property, so we see slightly better results of those samples that were cured at the lower temperature compared to the higher temperature. And we see that across the board. Slight increase in performance from 28 days to 90 days or 180 days, but not significantly. I think once you reach 90 days on all these tests, everything's pretty much the same. And then, of course, the chloride ion penetration test. These are the core samples. Each of those cores was, was cut from a different cylinder. Those aren't three cores from the same cylinder. That's the setup to run the test. Caustic on one side, sodium chloride on the other. And then you measure the Coulombs. And what you see here is that those, uh, the lower the value, the better performance. And what you see is that uh, the lower, pure, lower temperature cured systems are more slowly developed in chloride ion penetration resistance. And it's great when you have data that makes sense. And this makes sense to us because what you have in this concrete matrix is a, is a polymer. It's really a barrier polymer within that matrix. And so over time, it's a time and temperature relationship over time. And at higher temperature, you get film formation and coalescence taking place. And that's what develops a slightly better chloride ion penetration resistance. They're all still pretty good, but over time, they actually get better. And so that's what we conclude here, right? Good compression strength, bond strength, and then the chloride ion penetration test is what we expect that the lower temperature curing takes a little bit longer in order to develop lower uh, resistance. And so this was where we were going with this. We, we, the data suggests that we can pour under lower temperature, temperature conditions. It gives us a, a good discussion with contractors and DOTs to talk about we, we don't have to be above 50 degrees 100% of the time. We, there might be a few hours or a few days where we're expecting slightly lower temperature. That's okay. It's going to perform. Uh, and so that is another stage. Thank you.